Jesus said, come on. If Jesus has given me victory, come let's dance. If Jesus
joyful noise unto the king of kings the one who is worthy of all praise the i am and the i am that i am the lion of the tribe of judah come on make a glorious noise hey shout out that those say it come on lift your worship lift your worship lift your worship if you have something to wave unto the lord come on wave unto the king of kings hey Shake him out of Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Crucify, laid behind the stone. You live to die. Rejected in the Lord like a rose trampled on the ground. You too, the fall and thought of me. I'm a 
favor Crucify you say come on Crucify Let me hide the stone You live to die You live to die Rejected and alone Rejected and alone Like your own Oh! 
because of you. Out of your mouth, 
Lifting our hearts and hands before you. May our life worship you this morning. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you all the honor. Oh, we give you everything we have. Lifting our hearts and hands before you. Oh, we give you glory, Jesus. That is why there's no reason why we came than to glorify your name, for you are worthy to be praised. So we offer you our lives as a living sacrifice, holy accepted. That is why there's no reason why we came than to glorify your name. Father, you are worthy to be praised. So we offer you our life. As a living sacrifice, holy acceptable to you. We give you glory. We give you right. Come on, with our hands lifted up. We give you everything we have. 
left in our hearts and hands before you. Left in our hearts and hands before you. Above all powers, above all kings, above all kingdom and all created things, above all wisdom, above all wisdom and all created ways of man. You are here. King is in our midst. Amen. Let's continue in the mood of worship for a few seconds. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to dwell, oh Father God, with you this morning. We thank you for your presence. For the Bible says when the praises goes up, the blessings come down. We thank you for the blessing of healing. The blessing of preservation. We know that burden are being lifted up this morning. We came with an expectation to meet the King of Kings. And the King of Kings is in our midst. He has never lost any battle. Amen. He has never lost any battle. If you have any battle, lay it unto his feet and he shall give you victory. For the Bible says he is our advocate. The devil is a liar. He's under our feet. Holy ground, we should celebrate. 
because he is the king of kings. Oh, what a privilege. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the heavens are open. We receive our blessing. We receive our blessing. We receive the blessing that belongs to our children. We receive the blessing that belongs to our careers. We receive the blessing that belongs to our businesses. We receive the blessing of healing this morning. We exalt you this morning. Devil, you have lost a battle. You are messing with the wrong church, with the wrong crowd, with the wrong believer this morning. Oh, we thank you this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor this morning. Oh, Jesus, may you receive our praise, our adoration. Ah, Jesus, may you receive our praise and our adoration. May you receive even our declaration. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready to decree and declare the word of God? Hallelujah. Lift your right hand with faith. Hallelujah. Knowing that, that that which we are about to decree and declare, it shall be established in our lives. And we shall see the manifestation of it in our church and in our own lives. Amen. Hallelujah. So repeat after me by faith. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I declare that his word give me life, his power give me victory, and his love give me peace. This is my year of divine empowerment. I will be divinely empowered to serve, build capacity, win souls, and be committed to the assignment of God in my life. I will be empowered by the Holy Spirit to accomplish all that God has in store for me. In this year, God will bless my work of my hand. Whatsoever my hands touch will be blessed and multiplied. I am blessed with the dew of heaven daily God is releasing divine helpers into my life from the east from the west from the north and from the south I possess the gate of my enemy I possess the gates of my enemy I am complete in Christ there is nothing missing and nothing broken in my life. Father, help me commit to your Lordship all the days of my life. I declare that the Lord is my word, sword. I declare that the Lord is my sword and shield. He is the source of my strength. He is my glory and the lifter of my head. Can we repeat that? He is the source of my strength. He is my glory and the lifter of my head. If you believe, may you continue to clap unto the Lord even as we invite Pastor Kojo. Hallelujah. My God, my God, I feel charged already. Hallelujah. I feel stirred up already. Hallelujah. I know that the enemy is in trouble this morning. Wherever you are, gird up yourself. Get ready for fire. Get ready for release. Get ready for empowerment. Hallelujah. With a hand clap unto God and a celebration, let's receive the ministry of the anointed doctor, the apostle, doctor, Quincy Atipo, come on, celebrate the Lord. Consume me in fire.
sweet perfume, your awesome praise fills this place. Conceal me, fire, conceal me. Come on, lift it up. Sweet, sweet perfume, your awesome. Conceal me fire, sweet perfume, your awesome, awesome, conceal me fire, sweet perfume, your awesome.
say, oh, Shande has come to us to do. The one you restored has come to us to do. Hey, the dust you put together has come to us to do. The one you delivered has come to us with you. The one you showed your love and your kindness has come to us with you. The one you say Father, that is all we want to do this morning. Just to worship at your feet. You have saved us the clutches of death. You have saved us, O oh God, from the snare of the fowler. You have indeed delivered us, some of us, O oh God, even as a cloth of blood in our mother's womb. The enemy tried to truncate our destiny. But Father, you have saved us. This morning we say thank you, Abba Father. Thank you for saving us. All we want to do this morning is to worship you. We just want to worship you. Oh, Jesus, the son of the living God, reign in the midst of your people this morning. Anoint my tongue with a coal of fire this morning. Let your word proceed with power and anointing. And for another somebody live here, Delivered, oh God. Let somebody live here empowered, oh God. Let somebody live here healed, oh God. Let somebody live here liberated, oh God. By your power. In the name of Jesus. I hide myself behind the cross of Calvary. I dip myself in the blood that still flows from Calvary. That, oh God, oh God. Any arrows, oh man, they kadabosi ayandehi. Ah, maye kabasun de la babala. Angels of war be discharged even right now. And let me preach your word without fear. Let me preach your word without intimidation. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Abba Father. For each time I call you, you have always shown forth strongly in your power. Have your way this morning because we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. And somebody shout a thunderous amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the heavenly places. I thank God for this privilege once again. While driving from home to church, we had our first preaching. But uh, it was. Uh, tilted to one gender. But it's okay. God, we love them. It was more about women. And we were talking about uh, a husband's shop. And uh, we found out that so far 31 million ladies have failed because they tried to go to the sixth floor. And the sixth floor, there's nothing there. But I realized there's even a more stronger, the other day, man of God, brother Micah called me and said, Apostle Q, can you give me one of your jokes? I said, man, so I'm known for jokes. I, 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 I didn't know myself to be a funny person, amen? And I said, there was this man who was walking by the beach, and uh, he found uh, a shell. You know what the shell is? So he opened it on the seashore. Then a genie came out of the shell. Then he was like, uh-oh. Then the genie said, man, thank you so much for saving me. I've been locked here for so long. Just mention one thing, and I'll do it for you. And the man thought about it and said, okay. My family, we love going to Hawaii, but I hate flying. I hate flying. So I need a road from California to Hawaii so I can drive from Hawaii, take me from California to Hawaii. And the genie was like, man, that's so difficult. That's too difficult. Can you request, make another request? And the man said, sure. My wife, today she's like this, tomorrow she's like this. Can you help me understand my wife? And the genie looked at him and say, how big do you want the road to be? (laughs) (laughs) 
He said, I don't want to touch your wife's issue. Just tell me how, you, how big you want the road to be. I'll do the road. <laughs> but our wives, they love you. <laughs> I'd rather do the road than tell you about your wife. Amen? That was a smart one. Today, I am believing God for some powerful impartation. Because some of us have been in some situation for far too long. Some of us have suffered some things for far too long. It was in the family. Our great, great, great grandfather had it. Then he passed it on. And you look at the, 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 I mean the family line, the tree, and it's that this thing has been occurring. So I am believing God by the time we are done here today, oh Jesus, help me. Somebody you live here saying that, you know what? I have found a formula. I want to give you a formula today. And that formula, some of you is going to open some doors that should have been opened long ago. And some of us, I want you to live here with the belief that you, that the key to success has been thrown under the ocean. And all you have to do is to go into the ocean and pick that key. And I bet you, when you go there, pick that key and come on up and open that door. That is the kind of uh, anointed and believing God we experience today. Amen. I titled this message, Empowered to Silence Ungodly Voices. It is our season of empowerment, our year of divine empowerment. And I believe as a church, if we are given the tools, we can do mighty things. We can move mountains, amen. God, voices has been the bane of many of us. And I know of one thing, in the maternity hall, in the labor hall, the first thing the doctors and the mother, the, the expectant mother, the expecting mother wants to hear is a voice. If that child is born, if there is no voice, there is confusion in the, the labor room. So the doctors have to do overtime to make sure there is a voice. It's a cry of a baby. Amen? So voices have been there. We react to voices. We act according to voices. And we what? We, whatever we do is what? Controlled by the voices we hear. Amen? Why would somebody see a red light and decide to go through? Because a voice told him he can make it. Why would he see a, a, a yellow light going to red? And you know there's no way under the sun you can, you can make it. But that voice tells you, you can make it. Then you see yourself in the center of the intersection. And something bad happened. Voices. Somebody say voices. 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 Amen. I'm going to take time and see what I can teach. So in life, we respond to voices, somebody. We live to act according to voices. We live to react to voices. And we respond to voices. Amen? The outcomes of your life is, I mean, are essentially interpretations of voices that you've been exposed to. Amen? That's why we say sometimes the battlefield is in the mind. But the voices are just coming. What should I do? Should I do this? And some people say, uh, uh, every time I feel like this, and I feel like, what would somebody with a sound mind pick a gun, loaded gun, and go to a school full of kids and begin to shoot because they are hearing voices. The voice is telling them, go and do it and you'll be celebrated or whatever. Amen? Everything and anything respond to voices. That makes voices to be very powerful. Amen? So if you must accomplish what God wants you to be, you must be conscious of the voices in your environment. There's a consciousness that should come to the church. That when you hear it, tell yourself, as for this one, it is not from God. Amen? As a church, in this season of divine empowerment, things like this shouldn't, shouldn't be as church. When I hear, I say, wait a minute, this is not from God. Amen? Growing up, I read a lot of books. A lot. From James Hadley Chase to Sidney Ludlum. I mean, all manner of books, man. And most of my books were intelligence or spying, espionage, and stuff like that. 
and I read and I overread and I read and I read. At a point, I can be lying on my bed and I feel like somebody's a, it's a sniper trying to shoot me. So I'm on my bed and I, I'm like, okay, wait a minute, are they here? And I realize because of the things I've read. And as I read them, they went into my spirit. So my actions are not being premedicated by the things I have read. So voices began to speak in my head. Voices. And I know somebody at the sound of my voice. Those things, you are expressing them right now. But today there is grace for deliverance, somebody. There is grace for deliverance. Every ungodly voice, man, that they both see I are. Every ungodly voice, every contrary voice, my God, by the reason of the blood, is going to be silenced today. And the voices are still speaking. They are still speaking. They are still speaking. Amen? Voices. Voices. Woof. And the devil understands this very well. Amen. It, he understands the, what the eternal effects of voices. I use this to frustrate men and women. And the plan and the purpose of the enemy is to bring you under a voice. I have heard this. That this thing, you know, there's something in my head. There's something that's speaking to me. I'm hearing this. I feel like this. I'm this. Voices. Amen. All these voices that the enemy tries to. Oh, Jesus. Infiltrate into our minds. Somebody. This morning, I'm believing God. We're going to silence all of them. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, the word that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Amen. Let's go to the word of God. Maybe that will help. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. I'll see how far I can go. The Bible said, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. He was hungry. Of course, after 40 days and 40 nights. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of man, son of God, command these stones into bread. Next verse. Oh boy, I'm doing the new King James, so I want to make sure I follow my thoughts for it. Let me continue. From Do you have the new King James version, please? But he answered and said, it is written. Somebody say, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. When we are most vulnerable, that's when you hear some voices. Because I know of one thing. When you fast, even for one week, by the time you are end, your senses are so sharp. Amen. So the voices are coming. If you are indeed the son of God, command these stones to bread. For he said it is written. So Jesus is given the key to counter the voices. Amen. I want to go to school. You are too old. Come on now. Come on now. So if I don't go to school, I'm not going to get old. It just so happened today is my birthday, but I feel like 25, honestly. <laughs> my daughter asked me this daddy how old are you I said 25 he said but you were 25 last year I said I said I'm 25 <laughs> so if there's anybody here who is also 25 after that after church just join me <laughs> we are doing the 25 year old thing today <laughs> Mau, are you in that bracket <laughs> I just love 25. I don't know. There's something about 25. In then that's school, I've been 25 throughout. So somebody caught me one day. Said, ah, but wait a minute, Q. Last year you were 25. <laughs> so this is my <laughs> Mercy, mercy, mercy. <laughs> You're going to have fun today. So Jesus had to rebuke the devil. And the Bible says then... Oh, give me verse 3. Let's see. 
had five thousand. Verse four. But he answered and said, "It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God." What is God speaking to you? What is God speaking to you? That's verse. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on a, the pinnacle of the temple. Let's go. And said to him, if you are the son of God, just know Jesus is the son of God. Throw yourself down, for it is written, you shall, if the devil began to quote scripture. That's why I say, it is imperative that we know the difference between a godly and ungodly voice. Here was the devil quoting scripture, Psalm 91. He shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hand they shall bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against the stone. And trust me, if you are not being led by the spirit. No one at the Bible said Jesus was led by the spirit. Without empowerment, it is so easy to fall for these type of things. Is somebody hearing me? Next verse. And Jesus said, it is written again. <laughs> Amen. So when the voice comes, look for a scripture to empower you. Look for a scripture to outwit the enemy. Amen. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. What would it tell me? I know of, uh, of somebody, apparently he has schizophrenia. So he went to a tall building and the voice told him to jump down. And there are people like that all over the place. Voices. 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 Permit me to say the script, the, not the script, the stories I read as a child. I, I, I wish it were scriptures. <laughs> I read books to the point that man of God, some of those things I read, I put them into practice. Amen. There was one time I was in a very tight corner and the people had a gun on me. And we all think we should do like this. From nowhere, I don't know where the mic came from. I disarmed the man. I took the gun from him. And I've never shot a fire a bullet before. Then I put the thing, and all of them were on the ground. And I commanded a taxi. Then we got into the taxi and we left. And when we left, and I asked him, how did I even do that? I don't know how to do it. I have a, a cut of a gun butt here on my, on my hand. I mean, I've been, and I'm like, these voices were, I, I, look, if not for Christ, man, they, they both seek I under. I don't know how my life would have turned. But the voices were coming. The experiences of reading all those things I read were coming. Amen? And I can sit and I start imagining things. I read a book, The Second Lady, where the American government puts, planted a woman in the Kremlin, the Russian government. So they, they kidnapped the Russian first lady and put an American lady in there. And she was acting and behaving like the Russian first lady. All they wanted was an information. And the only person who can get the information has to be the first lady of Russia. And this, they played it so well. Everything was going fine. So the first lady, the, the, the real first lady has to go and visit her family. And the fake one went. And the dog caught her. <laughs> you know, so as I read, I'm imagining, how can I put this into practice? So, church, the voices are there. Amen? The voices. I want somebody to cast something about voices before I continue. Amen? The voices. So, Jesus was confronted with voices. That jumped down from the pinnacle of the temple. For he will send his angels to take charge over you. That you don't dash your foot. Trust me, if I should fall from a pinnacle, I'm not going to just dash my foot. Probably worse things will happen to me. <laughs> worse things will happen to me. Amen? Worst things will happen to me. I mean, you know the story of the temptation. And the Bible says, after Jesus passed the test, angels came and celebrated with him. Now, let me give you some uh, examples of pronouncements in the word of God that began to affect some people. Voices. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 49. Genesis 49. The Bible says, and Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear you sons of Jacob and listen to Israel, your father. 
one. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength. Very important. The excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water. Very important. So after all these things, this is where the main message is coming from. Unstable. Reuben. As water. Unstable. As water. You shall not excel. Meanwhile, the man was referred to as what? The excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. But here comes the father Israel saying that you shall not excel. Voices. Because you went up to your father's bed. Then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. If your father have to say this to you as his last parting words, I don't know how some of you feel like. Amen? And the Bible says there was something that Reuben did. They were living in this place and Reuben went to sleep with the father's uh, concubine. And the father got to know he was grieved. So before he, passed, he, he, he left the scene, he has to pronounce this. He said, you will be few. And you shall not excel. And check this out. Through the wars that the people of God went through, if you count the casualties of war, the Reubenites were the majority of the people who were being killed. Anytime Israel go to war, the Reubenites were killing, they were being killed left and right. Words, voices, a voice was spoken by the father. And they, look, they are, might, they are mighty in battle, but they die like chicken. Anytime Israel suffered great casualty, more than 60%, if no more, are from the tribe of Reuben. Because the Bible, the father said, you shall be few. Few, and you will not excel. Amen? So in Deuteronomy, Moses realized what was happening. And Moses had to come in. Moses had to come in. Amen? In Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1 and 6. Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Verse 6. Let Reuben live. Let Reuben live. Before that, what was Reuben doing? Reuben was dying in battle. But Moses has to reverse it. So voices are important. Voices are very important. Let Reuben live. Let Reuben live and not die. Nor let his men be few. I hope somebody you are catching something. Don't tell me that, oh, in my family, this and this is happening. So I have to embrace it. A voice can silence it. And more so an empowered voice. Amen. The father was hurt. So he spoke a word. And the word went through the generation. They go to war. They kill them like chicken. So Moses has to get up and say, no. No way. Let Reuben live and not die. And that's how the curse was broken. So don't tell me words are nothing. Words are powerful. Words are anointed. They carry power. I may say the same thing when I'm hanging out with you, but when I stand on this pulpit, because I am empowered, there's something behind it. If you are smart, you carry it around with it. Amen? Let Reuben live. You will live and not die prematurely. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will not die before your time. You will not die before your time. In the name of Jesus, let Reuben live. Let Reuben live. Something made me do it. A voice in my head made me do it. Voices can speak against your expectations. Voices can speak against your aspirations. And voices can speak against your desires. Amen. The Bible says, God told a man to dominate and to do what be in the garden. And the purpose of God was to come to the garden and fellowship with man. But when the voice of the serpent spoke to Eve, that wasn't the reason why I picked a woman in the first place. I mean, I'm just uh, preaching God now. <laughs> this is God. Amen. The Bible said the serpent came. They said, did God 
say we shouldn't do this and that. But he twisted the whole message of God. That's what the serpent did. So the voices can twist even the things you know already. So you are aware of this, that if you go out there, you don't spit on the flower bed. But you go out and the enemy tells you, when he spit there, you get money in your pocket. <laughs> then you say, oh, wait a minute, which one is the right one? But once some people, some of us, if you hear money, then our brain begins to do something else, you know? No, seriously. And the Bible says, Eve saw that it was good. And she went ahead and ate it. And when uh, Papa Adam comes, he says, oh, the thing Abba Father said we shouldn't do, I tried it today, the thing was good. And he also what? La Mumu. Carry the thing and eat. Amen. But remember, when God can say, God says, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden. <laughs> voice in the garden. And I realized that I was naked, so we are hiding. And God said, who told you? Which voice told you that you are naked? Which voice are you listening to? Which voice is making you make those decisions? Which voice? Who told you you are naked? Which voice told you you are naked? Who told you? Voices. Voices. Voices, somebody. Oh! Ha, ha, ha. Every decision and every undertaking of man, every pronouncement of man is in reaction to what? Voices that we don't hear, they are inaudible. You don't hear them, but they are in your head. So I heard this and I did it. Amen. Every product of a man is the result of a process that may not be visible. So your outcome is the result of the voices speaking to you. Go to school, don't go to school. Go to school, don't go to school. Do this, don't do it. Right? So I'm confused. Which voice is the right one? So all these are coming. Amen. You go through stuff, and the enemy wants you to believe that God is a wicked God. That's why you are going through it. Amen. You are broke. And the enemy is telling you, oh, it's because of what you did three years ago. That's why you are broke. You know, my Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you listening to? Amen. There's a slow man of God, some slow anointing coming. I'm feeling some heat here. <laughs> Whose voice are you listening to? In every action taken, you are responding to a voice. I'm repeating this just to make a point. You are responding to a voice. And the voice is head. But something's going to be broken today. Something is going to be broken today. That voice has to be silenced forever. That voice has to be silenced. People commit suicide. And if they survive the suicide for you to ask them why they, did they, they kill themselves. Or if you ask them after they kill themselves, why they kill themselves. <laughs> what they will tell you is that a voice made me do it. A voice told me that if I do this, I will end it all. A voice. Where from that voice? So you don't enjoy life again. The voice says, oh, the life is not worth living. And some of you, at the sound of my voice, if you are experiencing any negative and ungodly voice, this morning by the power in the name of Jesus Christ, Nazareth, I silence it right now in the name of Jesus. That no voice will cause you to do anything stupid. No voice will cause you to commit suicide. No voice, no ungodly voice, no voice from the pits of hell will cause you to do something that you, you never even live to regret. Voices. 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 The prophet Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 10 23, Oh Lord, 
I know the way of man is not in himself. So you cannot tell me you are in control of your life. There are voices. So the way of man is not in yourself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Very important scripture. Go and check it out. So it is not in your power to say, I know what I'm going to do. I have planned my life from A to Z. Try it. Even from A to B, there's going to be Wahala. <laughs> A to B. Amen. But God is about to deliver the church. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Woo. Then there's uh, the father of all lies, Satan himself, is good at packaging this. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came in the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, who do men say, I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, so they heard voices. Some say, how do you hear through voice? Amen. They are working with Jesus all this world, and they've heard voices. Now Jesus had to come in. Who do you say, I, the son of man, is? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, but Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now go down slightly to verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter. Then Peter. After he was saying, he was told, you are Bajona. Now, the enemy said, oh, okay, this is a good point. Is somebody getting me? When you are at the peak sometimes, when you are at the peak of adulation, when you are being praised, and the enemy sneak at thoughts, oh, it's because of your action, that's why you are like this. It's because you preach this word, that's why you are like this. Then the enemy comes in and says, okay, Okay, okay. So Peter now said, Baba Jesus, come. I know you just said I'm bad. Jonah. Come, let me talk to you. So the Bible said, he took Jesus aside. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, far be from you. Lord, this shall not be. This shall not happen. This shall not happen to you. So the man still pumped up. Because you are the rock. He said, you are the rock. So he still pumped up. He said, come, come, come. I know you just said I'm the rock so I can talk to you. Can you imagine that? The voices can make you do stuff. My God, my God. So Peter, I think Jesus would say, so thank you, Peter. Now you are the double rock. <laughs> Next verse. And Jesus, oh, <laughs> let's flow. But he turned and said to Peter, ha, 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 get behind me, Satan. Is somebody hearing me? Get behind me, Satan. Your senses have to be sharp. Amen. What would I tell my wife that I will die and on the third day I will rise again? Then she'll be there say, oh baby, really? <laughs> no, I rebuke that. So what Peter was doing was what a natural man would do. Is somebody hear me? But when you are empowered, you can delve into the spirit. When you are empowered, you can understand beyond the physical. Amen? Then you are an offense to me. After praising him. Now, Peter is an offense to him. Sometimes the way you deal, the, deal with the enemy, he has to be so powerful that he finds his place. Amen? But you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. And that's what we do sometimes in the church. How will men perceive me? How will men look at me? So we are doing stuff. Amen? Hey! Kabale, kadande, brosianda. Get behind me, Satan. When you don't fight voices, they become powers. Voices, they become powers in your head. When you don't fight voices, they become principality. When you don't fight voices, they become strongholds. 
And when the strongholds take charge of your mind, my God, you live in an alternate universe. Because the voices are telling you to do things. I had a patient one time, and I didn't understand what was going on. Anytime she comes to the office, she tell me, the father is here. I said, who? The father. I'm looking around now. At the point, I got scared. Going into his child, he said, you see, I, I told the father not to be following me, but he's still following me. And she came alone. And I said, oh, God. <laughs> and she's a sweet lady. But anytime she starts talking about the father, then I'm looking around. <laughs> okay, there's something here I'm not seeing. Amen? And so it got so serious. One time she came, she was angry. I told him to stop following me. He's still following me. You know, the children are there. We should take care of the children, but he's still following me. So I'm like, is he here right now? Is he here? Is he here? Is there standing? What would he do? <laughs> Amen? And my not to uh, discerning I was talking to this uh, Hispanic lady. She was, of course, looking at the fiscal, but I was trying to see beyond the fiscal. Amen. And I was like, so what is the father doing right now? And she'll be telling me, oh, it's a scary thing, a scary proposition to go through this conversation. When she is seeing the thing, you are not seeing it. <laughs> then it dawned on me that it was voices speaking to her. The voices are telling her that things are happening, and she's recounting those things to me. Amen. Why do you think people just get up and just have accidents for no reason? Amen? The work of the deaf wish. The voices can aid you to your untimely deaf voices. So if you don't have the tools to handle them, you live your life anyhow. Amen? But there's deliverance in the house today, somebody. If you are suffering from any inaudible voices, any voice that tells you to do the bad things, even to the kids, the voices tell you to do bad all the time. Amen. Voices tell you to disobey your parents. Voices tell you to do crazy stuff. They are voices. They are not godly. They are not what? what? Godly. They are not godly. Hallelujah, somebody. I feel like preaching. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Somebody say it's coming. It's coming. Woo! Then the voices can be empowered by altars. Altars can empower voices. The Bible says of Balaam and Balak. Where Balak came to Balaam and said, uh, curse the people of God for me. And he told him, build seven altars for me here. And prepare for me seven bulls and seven rams. What was he doing? I told you voices have power. So for the voice to be empowered, they have to make a sacrifice on the altar. Just for the voice to be what? Carry the power it intends to. And the Bible says, it's a long scripture, I don't want to go through everything. That when the sacrifice was done, Balaam says, I'm going to go meet God and come. Just wait here. And the Bible says, when he met God, God put word in his mouth. That the people are my people. And you cannot curse. You cannot curse them. You cannot. Opposite to what the man was expecting. Amen. You cannot curse the people of God. And I decree over you today. Anyone who has spoken every curse word over you. Matalabosi kabaha. Any curse word from the water. Every curse word from the forest. Every curse word from a demonic altar. Why the priest is still servicing the altar today? By the reason of the anointing and the unction over this house, I speak to your life. I speak to your life. That no curse will work in your life. No one will speak even against you and see the manifestation. They will wait and they will be disappointed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will not die but live to declare the awesome name of the Lord our God. God is raising a new generation. We will speak against every ungodly voice. Every ungodly voice in the name of Jesus. Voices. Voices. 
Now here comes, uh, I'm giving you all the examples of voices. Here comes Papa Isaac. The Bible says he was about to die. May you call Esau because he loved Esau. Why can't Isaac just go ahead and bless Esau? <laughs> he wants his voice to be empowered. He said, go ahead and get me game and come and cook for me a venison so that I can eat it and I'll bless you. Why can't you bless your son that who you, your son who you love? Right there. The voice has to be empowered. So he said, go ahead and get me food. When I finish eating, I can bless you. My God, my God, somebody at the sound of my voice. I don't know what's empowering the voices you are hearing, but this morning, there's a divine unction to change every ungodly voice into a godly voice. You only hear the voice of God. You hear only the voice of God. And the Bible says, Isaac went to the bush. Why there are goats in the house? But he ran to the bush. Hey! The man wants his voice to be empowered. Give me food. That can bless you. Voices. 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 There's a scripture I want us to read also. Hey. Somebody say, hey. My God, my God. Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 21, Proverbs 1 to 7. Second Samuel. Oh, I see Holy Grant Assembly. Oh, okay. Now there was famine in the land, or in the days of David, for three years. Listen carefully, somebody. Year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, it is because of Saul and his bloodthirsty house. Because he killed the Gibeonites. I'm not going to go far. Let me just, for the sake of time. So here's what happened. <laughs> when the people of God were on their way, or they, were in the, they, they landed in the, in the promised land. They were defeating, no, they defeated uh, Jericho and Ai. Amen. Then this group of people came wearing tattered clothes. And they put stuff on their body to make it look like they came from a far place. And they came to them and said, uh, we are from a far place. They came to Joshua, the book of Joshua. We are from a far place. And we've heard about your God, what your God has done to the people of Jericho, the people of Ai. Amen. So we have come to be your servants, the Gibeonites. And Joshua looked at them and said, Are you sure? Where are you from? He said, We are from a far place. And the Bible says they entered into a covenant with the people of Gibeon without uh, what, clarifying where exactly they were coming from. Three days or so after they signed the covenant, they realized they were their neighbors. So they were angry. But a covenant, what? It's a covenant. It has to stand. And the Bible said they live with them for all that long. So the people say, the people of God says, then you're going to be under us. As you said, you'll be our servant. They're not part of the the, 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 what? The, 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 the tribe of Israel. But they are going to be what? Servants. Fast forward into the time of Saul. Saul got up one day. Then he killed the Gibeonites. Slaughtered them. You don't break a covenant, somebody, my tabro siki and that. So the blood of the Gibeon began to speak against Saul. Saul began to hear voices. Saul began to think crazy. Saul began to, well, the Bible says at one time, David had to be called from the bush to come and play another music for him, another sound for him, another voice for him to calm him down. This man had to leave the palace and run into the bush looking for a small boy, 18-year-old boy. That he wants, he wants to kill him. You have a big palace. You love the palace. So the voice of the Gibeon were speaking against the people of God. So the Bible says in the time of David, for three years there was famine. And David went to God. And God says, it was because of the Gibeonites. Because of the bloodthirsty house of Saul. Is somebody hearing me? Then the people made a demand. 
He said, we want seven sons of Saul, whether his grandchildren or whatever. And we will kill them openly to atone for the covenant that was broken. <laughs> Amen. And that was what happened. But David, because of the covenant he had with Jonathan, spared Mephibosheth. Amen. What am I trying to say? Some of us, we come from homes and covenant, ancient covenants were made. And the covenants are still speaking. Makayande. In some homes, the covenants were broken because of somebody's stupidity or somebody's lack of knowledge, because of somebody's ignorance. So the covenants, some, the voices are still speaking. So things are happening in our homes and we, don't, we can't figure it out. We are working in life and our life has no purpose. But this day, Makayaba, there is liberty for somebody at the sound of my voice. Not any covenant that is speaking against you. Any covenant from the water. Any covenant from the mountains. Marker. Any covenant that is speaking right now that you will not progress. Every covenant that is telling you are going to die. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There is life. I speak life. I speak life. You will not die before your time. In the name of Jesus. Every covenant that is speaking. Every ungodly covenant that is speaking. In your background. Any covenant that is making you feel like you are mount to nothing. To Today, at the sound of my voice, ah, there is liberation coming for somebody. There is deliverance coming for somebody. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God is about to raise some people from their slumber. God is about to stop some people from marking time. If you're marking time for far too long and the voice is telling you it is okay to be where you are. It is not okay, sister. It is not okay, brother. You have a kayaba. You are in the, in the image of God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When the, when the trouble comes, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are saved. Today I decree over you, I decree over you that help will be made available to you. May you receive help. The sins of the fathers will not come on you. The broken covenants of the fathers will not touch you. In the name of Jesus. Hey, somebody say, hey. My God, my God. Whew. Ungodly voices. Ungodly voices. I know man of God, when I was going through some things, this voice was telling me, always showing me a picture of my death. And I said, no, you are a liar. You are a wicked and a foolish liar. And the thing was coming. I said, no, I'm not going to take this lightly. There's an orchestration. Anyone waiting to see my coffin, I stand before this altar. I stand before the altar of God. And I said, the decree right here that I will not die before my time. The voice was speaking. And sometimes I'll be driving. I'll be on the airplane. And the voice will be coming. What if the plane goes down? And I'm like, minus me. I am exempted divinely. I am exempted. The voices are powerful. Somebody, don't underestimate the voices. What will a soft-spoken boy just get up on money and take a gun to school? What made him do it? What made him do it? A voice. Amen. A voice. A voice. A voice. Somebody, I hope you are learning something. Man, that abasin delebe ki abaha. Ooh. I want to be on point, so just bear with me. Amen. Then we heard about uh, the story of Cain and Abel. The Bible said the two brothers went to offer sacrifice. But there was a, a caveat. Abel brought the choices and the best gift for the sacrifice. But Cain just took any produce. And the Bible says the sacrifice of Abel was accepted 
and that of uh, Ken was not. So he told his brother, let's go to the field to kill his brother. When Abel was killed, there was no angel there to report. There was none. Nobody was present to report. But the Bible says, God came in and talked to Cain. Where is your brother? He said, I'm, I'm my brother's keeper. A voice. That you should be on the defensive. Be on the defensive. He is God, but be on the defensive. And the Bible says, God told him, the blood of your brother touched the ground. It became a voice that came to me, crying for vengeance. Blood have voice. Blood speaks. That is why you have the altar. When you put your money on this altar, what you are telling God is that I am putting my blood, my sweat. Your sweat is your blood. I'm sweating right now because my blood is sweating over, over speed, over time, actually. Amen. So I'm sweating because everything in me is just going. There are so many things that are coming. Sometimes I'm, I'm suppressing myself. I want to speak, but I'm thinking, is it the right place, the right forum? But if the Holy Spirit allow me to say it, I will say it. Amen, somebody. So when I put money here, because when I go to work, my car, you can see me. I sweat a lot. So as I'm sweating, that's my blood. Amen. When I take that money and put it on the altar, all I'm doing essentially is that I'm putting my blood on the altar. And the blood on this altar provoke the altar to begin to speak. So we don't just put money on the altar. Sometimes you speak on the money and put it on the altar. Amen. You speak on the money before you put it on the altar. The voices are still speaking. There. But trust me, I know of one thing. There's a voice that supersedes all of them. There is a voice that is more powerful. There is a voice. When he speaks, everything becomes stable. So if you are here at the sound of my voice and you feel like you are, your life is confusion, confusion, a state of confusion, God is not the author of confusion. God prefers order. Amen. If your life is not in order, this word is for you. If you feel like your wife is, life is going in circles, this word is for you. If you feel like you are doing very good, this word is for you. Amen. God, you need that voice. You need to take charge. You need to be in control. The voice is still speaking. The weapon that we have, you and I, is the word of God. So when the voice speaks, use the word of God to counter it. Amen. Use the word of God to counter it. A prophetic word comes, then the voice starts speaking to you. Oh, it is the same thing all over again. They are telling me the same thing. This thing, I've heard it. I heard it since the uh, 2000, uh, what, one, and nothing has happened. Now they are saying it again. The voice is telling you. But can you go around and say, hey, voice, whatever you are saying, I know it is not godly. I believe the word of God. I am running with this prophetic word. The Bible says, though it may tarry, though it may tarry, but it will surely come to pass. It may tarry. Amen. When God spoke to Abraham, he said, your children, your descendants will be in captivity for 400 years. But the Bible says, they were in captivity for 430 years. Was God a liar? But all this where God was looking for a man. So he found Moses. He asked Moses, in the wilderness. Tending the, the flocks of Jethro. Amen. Then the Bible says he heard a voice. When he turned. No, first he saw a burning bush. There was fire. But the bush was not being consumed. So out of curiosity, the man went closer. And the Bible says what? A voice came. From the bush. From the burning bush. And the voice told him that where you are standing is holy grounds like we are right now. And that voice has been a voice that gathered Moses. I'm sending it to my people in Israel. I've heard their cry, and I'm sending you there. And the voice has helped Moses. I mean, he went to uh, Egypt. The voice helped him to counter the magicians of Pharaoh. The voice helped him to the mountains. Everything Moses did was the voice of God. So it is important we differentiate 
which voice we are hearing. What voice are you hearing to? Or whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you listening to? There was a friend of mine in dental school after three years of suffering. He told me dentistry was not for him. And I was angry at him. And the essence of my anger was that getting into the school is very competitive. So if you should take somebody's spot, and after three years, you have only one year to graduate, you now tell me dentistry was not for you. I felt like it blocked somebody's chance. And I was angry. So I said, so what are you going to do? They're going to do a valet. I'm there thinking. You know, people do crazy things and you start wondering. Being, having a DR before my name or being a valet boss. And I'm there. I, I couldn't comprehend. But now it's making sense to me. The voices. Sometimes from your background. The voices were telling him, leave this school. And go. But he's doing well now. He has several valet stuff in the metropolis. You know? But what am I trying to say? Where were the voices when he was applying for dental school? Where was the voice? Why didn't the voice tell him that don't even waste that money? Now he's owing that, unless maybe some of them are, they are well to do, you know. But the voice can make, make some decisions that are life altering. Amen. Then they ask you, how did it come about this? Oh, I just thought about it. <laughs> Have you said that before? I just thought about it. It's the voice. Amen? It's the voice. And the voice, even as you are listening to me right now, I know the voice is speaking to some of you. The voice is telling some of you that this is a good word. And the voice is telling some of you, oh, because he knows my stories. That's why he's, he's here preaching these things. I don't know anybody's story. <laughs> Do you know how I know? I know I don't know anybody's story. If church is over, I'm the first to get out of here to my car. <laughs> because I don't want to stay. If it's not going to be anything that will be beneficial, I'm, I'd rather be in my car. Amen. I don't want to hear about what is going on or what, who is doing what and who is doing what. I don't want to know. I come to church because there's a man who has saved me. So I've come to worship him. The man you serve has come to worship you. This is the mindset I have when I come to church. I'm so focused. All I want is just to come to the presence and soak the presence. Because some of us, we have come from afar. Where, 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 where we come from? When they tell you you're going to be a doctor, you got to look at the person and say, look at the person and say, are you sure of what you are saying? Amen. So when my father said that he wants somebody to be, he want one of his children to be a doctor, I look at the man and say, you have never done anything to make me feel like I can be a doctor. But something inside of me began to witness to my spirit. And not long after that, I'll take a toad, I'll catch a live toad, pin it on a board, and I'll open it. I said, I want to see how the heart is working. And I'll, my mom will be screaming, that you're going to kill. I said, Mom, don't worry. When I finish, I'll switch it back. It will live. And all those toads, none of them have lived. So I fell in my first try as a doctor. But I love the sight of seeing the live toad with a heart doing like this. I said, oh, wow. So this is what happens in human beings. And I didn't know what I was doing then. I was just having excitement. I was just having fun. I was enjoying the spectacle of seeing a live animal in front of me. Now, I use uh, this toy we used to sew clothes. The black, it's on a black thing. Back in the those who were born in the 1980s, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Amen. So I'll use that and I use a needle. And I saw I it. I didn't know I was preparing myself for anything greater. But what I love to do now is surgery. I love it when I have to open those jaws and take out the wisdom tooth which is impacted. I go in there and it's all bloody. And I'm watching there and everybody's scared. And I'm there. People are running there when I'm going in there. Amen. And I just love the spectacle. Like I just want to make sure everything is fine. So I have all these animals in front of me. And my father is saying that somebody has to be a doctor. But he didn't pick me. Because if you look at everything, nobody has even seen my results before. Amen. I go to school and I go to school. So one day, 
My anger came and said, this is your Saito. You've been Saito for far too long. You know what Saito? <laughs> Middle school then was called Saito. Those who were privileged, like somebody I know, they go to preparatory schools. This, uh, you know, so they six after six years of primary school, go to secondary school. But we, we have to go from form one, form two, form three, form four. And in the form four, you, you are pleading the blood. Hey, let me, <laughs> because when you finish form four, because it sounds seven, I don't know. <laughs> and that's it. You get that middle school living certificate, then you go and stay home. So I was asking myself, how can I go to this school and become a doctor? And the voice was amplifying it in my head. That the environment surrounding you doesn't show that you can become a doctor. The environment you're growing in, who is the doctor in the family that you can look up to? I look around and I can't find anybody. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost. So while my mind was speaking those to me, the Holy Ghost was teaching me how to cast and open a toad. And I couldn't put the two together. Amen. So the voices are still speaking to some of you, especially the young ones. As to what to do. What do I do? What do I do? Do I take this bad decision? Do I do this or that? Voices. Voices. We're going to pray this afternoon. This afternoon already. I think let me wrap up. We're going to pray. And our prayer is going to be in two parts. First, we're going to make some declarations. Then after the declarations, remember I said a voice. I mean the blood has voice. We're going to partake in the Lord's table. And we're going to make some declarations today. We are going to invoke the heavens today and believe God for the voices of the enemy. Every contrary voice, every ungodly voice to be silenced in the name of Jesus. Are you with me? Are you with me? It's coming. It's coming. Just wait for it. It's coming. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds. I told you the voice can become a stronghold. So the only way you can bring the strongholds down is employing the power of God. Amen. The power of God. Oh Jesus, I thank you. So as a child of God, it is important to be filled with the Spirit so that you don't fall prey to ungodly voices. Amen. The voices are still speaking. Even as I'm here, things are coming to my head. How do you process it? How do you filter it? What is godly and what is ungodly? Amen. So our yardstick is the Word of God. If you have the word of God, it makes everything new. Somebody be on your feet. My God, my God, my God. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it, we eat its food. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. So as you verbalize, as you speak, you can speak life and you can speak death. Then your tongue. Amen. Somebody begin to bless the name of the Lord right now. If you have to prepare to take some confessions. Man, delebrosi e andalabaha. Rente balebe, kabale andelebe. Man, delebrosi e andele makiande. Rabale kapali and delebe, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Badida, Rovacla, Son de Bligito, Mogabade, Shegli, Ebozabaha, Legrato, Son Lima, Abade, Yadiri, Bregato, Baglesa, Bagle, Devegos, Rodibria, Bande, Eh, Magabadishi, Bagida, Badishi, Legida, 
Parado so liga baha Rebondi via ba Brado so di ibente Ya dina malo vaglesha Maguni mito vale kapande Ya ndala bazibi Liki tilidi Vagede musa baha Radini bine zugishi in the name of Jesus. Somebody raise your right hand with me. Yes. Say in the name of Jesus. 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 Any voice, any voice speaking against my destiny. Speaking against my destiny. Be silenced now. Be silenced now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any voice, any voice speaking against my business. Speaking against my business. Be silenced now. Be silenced now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Any voice, any voice speaking against my marriage. Speaking against my marriage. Speaking against my marriage. Speaking against my marriage. Be silenced now. Be silenced now. In the name of Jesus. In the name, in of, the name Jesus. of Jesus. In the name any of Jesus. Voice, any voice. Speaking against my children. Speaking against my children. Speaking against my children. Speaking against be my silenced children. now. Be silenced now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Any voice. Any voice. Speaking against my relationship. Speaking against my relationship. Speaking against my relationship. Speaking against my relationship. Be silenced now. Be silenced now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any voice. Any voice. Speaking against my ministry. Speaking against my ministry. Be silenced now. Be silenced now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any voice. Any voice. Speaking Speaking against, speaking against, speaking against, speaking against, my, my progress, my progress, be silence now, be silence now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, any ungodly voice, any ungodly prophesying, voice, prophesying, rising and falling, rising and falling, in my life, in my life, be silence now, be silence in now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of any Jesus, any voice, any voice, empowered, empowered, by a covenant, by a covenant, speaking against me, speaking against and me, and my family, and my family, be silence now, be silence now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, any ungodly Voice, any ungodly voice, any ungodly voice, any ungodly voice, any ungodly voice projecting, projecting my untimely death, my untimely death. Be silenced now, be silenced now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of any Jesus. Any contrary voice, any contrary voice, empowered by an altar, empowered by an altar. Speaking against my progress, speaking against my progress. Be silenced now, be silenced now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Any ungodly voice, any ungodly voice, any ungodly voice, any ungodly voice. Speaking against my future, speaking against my future, speaking against my future. Speaking against my future. Be silenced now, be silenced now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name every of Jesus, every ungodly voice, any ungodly every voice, ungodly voice, every ungodly every voice, ungodly voice, every ungodly voice, speaking again, speaking again, my next level, my next speaking level, speaking again, speaking again, my next level, my next level, today, today, by the power, by the power, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, as I invoke, as I invoke, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, be silenced now, be silenced now, be silenced now, be silenced now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I refuse, I refuse, I refuse, I refuse, for my life, for my life, to be controlled, to be controlled. Contrary voices, by contrary by voices, voices, by contrary by voices, by voices, by uncalled in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I liberate myself, I liberate myself, I liberate myself, I liberate myself, by the power, by the power, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I liberate myself, I liberate myself, I liberate myself, I liberate myself, by the power, by the power, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, deliver me, deliver me, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, deliver my mindset, deliver me, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, deliver every stronghold, deliver every stronghold, every stronghold, any stronghold. My head, in my let head. it be delivered. Let me now. 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 now, 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 in the name of in Jesus. The name of Jesus. Put your hands. Hands. Apostle. communion today when you have your communion you're going to speak to the heavens amen remember I said the blood can speak or has a voice amen this is the only covenant you and I have and it's a living sacrifice so today we are reversing some things anything that is struggling you are struggling with every decision you are struggling with this is the time to just speak to God amen so let the communion go around, then we just add, end up. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah 
there is your name mighty warrior mighty warrior great in battle Jehovah is your name Jehovah is Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah Jehovah is your name. Come on, sing it out. Mighty warrior. of you watching from home, if you can grab an, uh, the communion, if you don't have a communion, get a, a juice or a bottle of water. We don't want you to miss out on this. If you don't have the bread, just get a wheat bread. That is okay. We're going to pray. And this is a solemn ceremony we are doing right now. But we are believing God for some things to end once and for all. Amen. Some things have to what? End once and for all. Hallelujah. Mighty warrior. That, that's been the mood of worship right now. Mighty warrior. Great. Somebody lift up your elements.
to the harvest and repeat after me. Behold the body and the blood of my Savior, Jesus Christ. The one that takes away the sins of the earth. The one that breaks every curse. The one that silences every ungodly voice. The one that has the power to give me life. The one that has the power to silence the voice of death. The one that has the power to make my future beautiful. Oh blood, oh blood, you have a voice. You have a voice. This afternoon, this afternoon, let your power be evident in my life. Let your power be evident in my family in the name of Jesus. Let me carry the evidence of your power. Let me carry the evidence of your healing. Let me carry your evidence. Let me carry the evidence of your mighty power in the name of Jesus. From this day forward, from this day forward, let my life never go in circles. From this day forward, forward ever, backwards never. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare as a child of God, as a child of God, as I partake in this covenant. Oh covenant, oh covenant, speak for me. Oh covenant, let the voice of the covenant of the body and the blood of Jesus speak for me. Now, 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 in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big amen. Now let's partake in this covenant together. Power and mind all belong to you, Jesus. Forever and ever. Oh, amen. Power and mind. Come on. It all belongs to you, Lord. Forever and ever. Power belongs to you. Power belongs to you. In heaven and the earth. All power belongs to you. Power belongs to you. Heaven and the earth. Heaven and the earth. All power belongs to you. This mountain shall be removed. Oh, this mountain shall be removed. In Jesus' name, by my spirit, says, Oh, this mountain, this mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be Beloved, I want you to understand one thing. The Bible says that Gibeonites made a covenant with the people of Israel. And the covenant was still speaking. What you have done here today, and for those from home, you have just reactivated a covenant that was done 2,000 years ago. Over 2,000 years ago. And it goes to say that even if somebody thinks he's anointed and is plotting evil against you, this covenant will speak for you. I want you to go with this mindset. But it is real. 
And some of you are going to start having some dangerous dreams from tonight. Some of you, your life is going to turn one, what, 180 degrees. And you'll be like, oh my God, how did this happen? Amen? I want you to have this mindset as you live here today. And for those watching from home, we want to thank you for joining us. God is still working on your case. A, these are the seasons of the strange acts of God. Some strange things are going to be happening in your life. Some strange financial blessings are going to come over your life. And you're going to be looking at your bank account and say, is this really me? That says the spirit of the living God. He said, in this month of March, I am pouring my blessings out on my people. Don't you, don't you be left out, somebody. Don't be left out. It's a season of harvest. It's a season of fruitfulness. May God bless you. May God honor your seed. And may God let his face shine upon you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I want you to package a seed for this season. The deliverance of God is in the atmosphere. The curses have been broken. The evil voices, the ungodly voices are being silenced. The blood of Jesus is speaking for us. As the man of God declared, you will see a turnaround. You will see a release. You will see the yoke broken. And as you bring your tithe and offering, if you are online, the methods of giving is made available for you. Uh, we, we saw a few people still posting their money to the old cash app. So we had to turn it off. This is the new cash app account on, on your screens. Please, let's use that. As the man of God said, your money is your blood. And as you release it, you make it speak for you. Hallelujah. Choir, I want you to help us as we bring our tithe and our offering. God bless you. Oh, I saw a living God. 
We are enjoying our deliverance. The man want to cut it short. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for every seed and every offering, every tithe, both here and online. We thank you that as we release our tokens of thanksgiving, our tokens of appreciation and the covenant, O God, of your supply. There shall be no lack in our midst. We shall have more than enough. We shall be blessed and give us because your channel will continue to supply and we will be a blessing to your glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, amen, amen, amen. Somebody say, wow. Say, wow. You see, this is what happens when you are celebrating your birthday and you have to deliver the heaven's word. Man of God, Magila Bazusha. Today, woman of God, you have to do special massage. This one from the church. <laughs> man of God, wow. I want you to declare something over the life of the man of God. He poured himself. I believe that some voices have been silenced from today. We will see the evidence of this word in our life. And now out of your heart, I want you to declare over his life. His family, his household, his business, his wife, his children, everything concerning his life. That God will continue to lift him from level to level. God will continue to make him a voice in this generation. He will continue to declare the glory of God. Wherever he goes, the glory of God will follow him. In his workplace, at home, in his family, wherever he goes, he will be a representation of the kingdom. Yes, Lord, we lift your man servant before you. My God, as you have added another year to him, as you have used him mightily to bless your people, Jehovah. Let heavens remain open over him, over his household, over the work of his hands, over everything that is connected to him, Jehovah. Ah, may his enemies be scattered and never be seen again. May anything that will rise up, O oh God, to contend against him be silenced forever, Jehovah God. As you are using oh, your son, O oh God, we pray that you increase him in every dimension and let your glory alone be revealed in his life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man of God, we love you, we salute you. May God continue to use you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we take the announcements, I just want to let everybody know that it is a new season in Holy Grounds. Hallelujah. And the Lord is moving us from level to level. So if your prayer life is kicking in, don't quench it. Amen. If you feel like fasting more, don't quench it. If you feel like going out and evangelizing, don't stop it. Because the move of God is flowing in holy grounds. Hallelujah. If you are not in any department, I want you to plug in. Those of you who are online, you can still connect some way, somehow. Those who are in Dallas, we can locate you. Those who are not in Dallas, we will find a way to connect with you. Hallelujah. But we want to get everybody involved in the ministry of Holy Grounds Assembly. Amen. The technical department, please wait behind briefly after service. And uh, I don't know if there are any other announcements apart from the normal announcement. Are we going to play the announcement online? Is it scheduled? Okay. Let's be on our feet. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. As the word said, he said, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Today, I feel like we are on Mount Zion. And I feel like some yokes are broken forever. Oh, can you shout a big amen? Madabalaga, so vele behetavaya. I declare over you this week that this deliverance is perpetual. The voices that have been silenced will never speak again. Only the voice of God will lead you in your dreams, in your meditations. 
You're going out and you're coming in. The voice of God contend against every demonic voice, every ungodly voice. And the anointing released today will forever abide in your life in the mighty name of the resurrected Christ. And everybody shout and say, Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's get the announcements playing. Here are the announcements for this week. For our weekly activities, every Monday and Tuesday, we have our prayer meeting on our prayer line and also on Facebook Live from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. If you have a prayer request or know someone in need of prayers, you can join or invite them to join us on our prayer line or on Facebook Live every Monday and Tuesday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. The prayer line is 214-238-4170. Again, the prayer line is 214-238-4170. Every Wednesday, we have our Bible studies with Pastor Kojo on Facebook Live. The time is from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please invite your friends and family to join us as we study the Word of the Lord. Every last Friday of the month, we have a half night service on Facebook Live at 10 p.m. Please invite your friends and families to join us on Facebook Live as we seek the face of the Lord. And please remember to keep the world in your prayers. Every Saturday morning, our prayer warriors meet on our prayer line from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Everyone is invited to join. The prayer line again is 214-238. 4170. Again, our prayer line is 214-238-4170. Every weekday morning, we have our morning prayers on our prayer line at 6 a.m. We encourage every church member to join us for our morning prayers every weekday at 6 a.m. Uh, our prayer line is 214-238-4170. Again, the prayer line is 214 214- 2384170. We are helping our community during this time. Please visit our website at www.hgai.org for more information. If you are a church member and you need help, please contact our hospitality team for more information. Thank you once again for worshiping with us today. You have a blessed week.